Hey, Beth Vanderkin here from the Vanderkinverse. I'm just going to take you on a little tour today of a guest room that we've recently redone. So, one of the big things that we did in this room is we stenciled, which was a very long and involved process. Um, I'm going to take you through that a little bit later in this video of how exactly we did that, but we decorated, we stenciled the entire room. We painted all the trim, we installed crown molding. Um, I refinished this chair that I purchased for a dollar at the State Surplus Store of North Carolina. It was actually in the governor's office. Can you find that hard to believe? Um, we built this lovely little shelf with the help of my husband, who found some pretty little trim pieces at the Home Depot, painted those to match. And so it's just a nice place for people to hang their purses or um, their coats or wherever when they're staying in your guest room. We also installed some little reading lights above our bed, which were quite fun because we didn't wire them. They have little battery operated pucks that we installed inside of them and they have a remote control, which is kind of fun. So there you go. Um, one of the features that I really, really love about this guest room is we installed charging stations in the top of these nightstands. So I purchased the nightstands online, but we bought these charging stations on Amazon for around $25. And my husband installed those so people just don't have to have their cords laying everywhere. Just a little fun guest tip. I think that's probably all of all the great things that we've done. But um, now follow along as I show you exactly how we stenciled these walls. So we decided to stencil this room, or rather I decided to stencil this room, and I think this is the only part of the project that um, I have to do all by myself because it, I guess it's too complicated. So um, just a few tips for how to stencil. Um, first, have a really smooth, clean wall. That will be very helpful. Number two, um, match your paint sheens. The glossier the paint, the harder it is to stencil because of paint bleed under the edge of your stencil. So um, probably the highest paint sheet you'd, you'd probably want to do is a satin or a eggshell. Um, you can vary your paint sheets if you want. You would just put a flatter one on top of a shinier one instead of shiny on top of flat. Um, I decided to go monochrome, kind of the same colors, color hues over color. So very, um, just very subtle. So I went with a very organic design. It's called Sprigs. Um, it's from, hmm, I forget the name of the stencil company, but it's a big stencil company online. Um, what I like about this stencil is it comes with the full giant stencil, but it also comes with a top, um, a top starter stencil. So you don't have to cut your stencil. Um, and so I've already gone ahead and I've done the whole top of this wall. And I've just repeated that over and over and over. And I'm using my wall as hopefully, my ceiling is hopefully a level line and I'm gonna go down from there. Thankfully this is very organic so you won't notice if it's going a little bit crooked. So um, I've just come down here and I'm just gonna show you how, you how you do this. You just use painter's tape. Um, there's a couple little spaces here that the design has been already put on the wall from the previous stenciling from down here. So you match these up here the best you can. You can buy a leveler that you attach, a real small thin leveler that you can attach to your stencil. They, they make them and sell them. Um, if you're really, really concerned about it being absolutely perfect. Otherwise, you kind of just line it up, painters tape it on, I do have a level up here. Just in the beginning, I was checking to see like, oh, am I going? It's fairly level. Don't tell my husband that it's on level. Now, here's the biggest trick. How to get paint on the stencil without having it go under the edges, and they call it seepage. So if you put the paint on too heavy, it goes under the edge of the stencil, and it seeps onto your wall, and you don't get a nice, crisp um, paint line. The problem, and, if, and you can do that if you get too much paint on your tool. Two ways to do this, foam roller or a stippling painting brush. A stippling painting brush would probably take you 
a month to do a room this size. So I think you gotta go with a foam roller when you do a big space. So I have a foam roller, I'm gonna show you how to load your paint. I have this handy dandy little tray. You're just gonna put a little bit of paint on this roller, kinda of distribute it, you kinda of hear the tacky, tacky sound. It's almost a dry roller. Then when you think you kinda of have some paint distributed on there, give it a couple of rolls on a paper towel to get off the excess. Doesn't seem like a lot, it's not. We don't want it to seep. If it starts seeping, it gets under the edge, and then your stencil won't lay flat against the wall. And then that's another problem because then you have to wash your stencil in the bathtub and all that kind of stuff, and that's very annoying. Then you simply roll. You don't want to press too hard. Now I'm going for a very solid, all filled in color. Some people um, kind of just do a quick brush over to make it less, um, you know, less I don't know, full, I guess, less solid. So I keep going until I can't see any wall color. You just don't want to press so hard that you get paint smushing under the edge. So you can see it's pretty quick. So. And there's our little one at the bottom that we want to make sure and get because we're going to use that to line up next time. You also want to make sure when you tape your stencil on the wall, you have it as tight as you can. But notice that when, even though it's loose against the wall, the roller is going to push the stencil down against the wall. If you have one with big gaps or big holes, you might want to be careful, mindful of which way you run your roller so you don't accidentally lift the edge up. But this one's a pretty small design, so I don't really have to worry about it lifting up the edge. Yeah, that looks like. It's about all filled in. That was pretty simple. Okay. And then you simply set this down. You simply remove it from the wall. Voila. There you go. It doesn't look like we have any drips or paint runs or anything like that. So we don't have any seepage on the back side of the stencil, which is awesome because then we can keep reusing it. So then you just and because you're using such little paint, it's hardly wet at all, you can simply now just line it up again and do your next run. Now, the last part of this that's tricky is when you get to edges, you get to corners. When we get to that and you're totally done using up your big stencil, then you can cut your big stencil to figure out how to fill in those gaps. That's it. So that's it. That's how you stencil walls. And then a few more finishing touches and you have a brand new guest room. Thanks for watching.